Jeremy Hazel here from 7 Season Studios, and this is an excerpt from our brand new course, The Complete Guide to Editing in Affinity Photos. So if you like what you see and you want 10 solid hours of what we've got here, go ahead, check out the link below for a special offer for our YouTube family. All right, let's go ahead and get with the learning. All right, folks, and welcome back to Affinity Photos. So in this lesson, we're going to show you something that's a little more advanced. We're going to show you blend ranges. Now, we covered blend modes. Blend modes are here, right? Blend ranges are this little cog over here, and in a way, blend ranges tell Affinity Photo what areas to apply and blend. So they're almost an augmentation. As an example, if I come over here, let's go ahead and come to this fist here. As a compositor, one of the things that I do a lot is I put flames and special effects around people. So this is one of the areas where I use blend modes. It's my primary reason for using them. I don't do a lot with them otherwise, but I wanted to show you because this is the complete guide. So if we go file, place, let's go ahead and place in this flame. Let's go ahead and turn it over. Okay, now you see we've got a very good solid black. Now I'm going to differentiate blend mode from blend range here in a second. All right. Let's go ahead, I'm just gonna turn this off and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm turning this one on. There's a method to my madness. Now, let's say here that I change the blend mode on this, right? So I wanna make this like color dodge. This is a great example. Okay, so clearly this is not a great way to blend, but you see how bold it is and you've applied the color dodge throughout the entire range of the image. Now, if I'm on the color dodge and I bring up my blend modes, watch this. When I drop the lights, what's going to happen is Affinity Photo is only going to blend in the darkest darks. Now, we read this just like a curves adjustment. On the left hand side, right here, this is your darkest, darkest darks. Over here are your lightest, lightest lights. And think about this on the vertical axis being 0% to 100%. So what I'm telling Affinity Photo here is when it comes to the darks, blend 100% of the darks into that blend range. However, when it comes to the lights, don't blend the lights at all. Bring them to 0%. And the source layer is the image. So if I bring these back up, now let's tell Affinity Photo to not blend any of the darks. What we should be left with is only the lightest lights. Notice what is maintaining, the light. Now watch this. If this is dark and this is light, what do you think in the middle here is? Pretty much the midtones, right? Let's now tell Affinity Photo to not blend midtones in. Okay, you see how all the midtones are disappearing? And now if I shrink this over, what should be the last, last to go are the lightest lights of this image. So that's what blend modes do. Now to remove this little dot, just click on it and hit delete. All right. So you got two different options for blend modes. There's source layer and there's the underlying composition ranges. Now watch this. If I'm on the flame layer again, and I tell Affinity Photo, wherever the underlying composition is super dark, don't show the flame. Watch what happens. You'll see how now it's removing it from everywhere around where that underlying composition is really dark. If I tell to remove the flames where they're super light, it will remove the flame where it's super light. So now let's kind of look into the application of this. All right, I'm gonna bring this back because now we got a standard blend mode, All right? I'm just gonna leave it on normal. And now if I use my blend range and I want to remove all of the black, should I look at the source layer or should I look at the underlying composition range? I'm going to remove the source layer. So now watch the black. All the black disappears. What we've told Affinity Photo is, 
do not bring in any of the black. And this relationship is linear. So you see how I washed out a lot of the mids? Click in the middle, bring back the mids. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring this up. And this, in addition to liquefying and some other stuff, is how I really start doing compositing on the hands and such. There's a couple more techniques, but this is pretty much the idea. You can liquefy, it saves me from masking. All right, now, I want a little bit of this hand to be showing through, right? So in addition to removing the black and bringing back some of the mids, now I want to tell it, you know what? Where we've got some darks, I want to keep that around. Let's go ahead and drop some of these mids. And now you see how we're bringing in some more of the hand? And let's go ahead and drop the white because I want to bring in some of the knuckle. All right, now this is actually pretty cool. If I was gonna start compositing, this is a pretty good one here because now, see how I've got that palm kind of sticking out there? I've got good differentiation in the fingers and I've got a good knuckle. I've now created this really cool illusion of background flame, the fist being in the center, and where the fist kind of curves up, I've got this flame coming out. Now, I can adjust this, I can maneuver it, right, until I get it where I want it, and then of course I'd have to put in some form of a foreground flame. But this is one of the reasons and one of the applications why I use blend ranges. All right, let's look at another application. Now, this image here has a lot of unnecessary stuff, so let's just crop this bad boy out. I like her, I wanna keep the rule of thirds, but I don't need some of the things like the truck or these fairy lights right about here. So let's go ahead and shift her over. All right, and enter. Now, why did I choose this image? These little twinkle fairy lights are really good. I've got some black areas down here, right, up here. So I wanna add in some lighting. So I'm gonna to go to File, Place. Let's grab this image from Unsplash. And now I could go through and I could select all of these or I'm gonna show you the super cheater way. With this image here, I'm gonna come over to my blend ranges. I'm going to choose the source layer and I'm gonna drop out my source layer. And you'll see what just happened. Now, you see I lost some of these lights. Let's go ahead and bring back a little bit of the mid here, just a little. We're looking for enough of the light to show. All right, cool. Now, is it perfect? No, you see we've got a few artifacts here, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna put this up above here. And now when I think about just masking it out, watch this. Think about the masking job that has to be done now. All I gotta do now, come over here, make sure I have my black color. And if I'm on my mask layer, there's not much there now I have to mask out. You see how much work that saved me? That's huge. Now just to show you what we got, off, on, off, on. And if I wanted to, I could come down in here and I could wipe these away. And you see how there was so much dark up here that even if I had a few artifacts, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Let's go ahead and just kill that. All right, cool. We got some good lights and we can add some glow to this and we can do some cool stuff. All right, so now let's add one more thing because I wanna show you guys how I use this. Let's go to File, Place. And now I'm gonna grab this bouquet style light here. All right, now, in order to select this, flood fill selected, it would be a disaster. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag it down because it's interacting with this background. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use blend ranges. So I'm gonna start in the source layer and you see how I've got kind of mid-tones, they're not deep blacks. So I'm gonna tell it one, kill out all the blacks. Two in the mid-tones. Um, let's add the mids. Let's show this amount. And I'm just trying to kind of balance out the fairy light versus what I want. 
And now three, let's go ahead and line some of this up here. I do not want to jeopardize her face on here. So now I'm just going to figure out exactly where to put this thing. I think that that's pretty cool. All right. So now we've done the foreground thing. You've seen that show and you see how I'm grabbing some of the bouquet off from here. But this is a disaster. So two things we're going to do. We're going to start by looking now at the underlying composition. So now in the lightest areas of the composition, I'm going to want to not have those things show through as aggressively. All right, bring them down until we're good. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the darks. Mm, I might keep the darks here. And then let's take a look at the lights. All right, the lights don't seem to have much of an effect. All right, now let's try the mids here. See what we get. That's actually much cooler. All right, and if you wanted to, you could add another dot. And you could make adjustments here to kind of fine tune it. All right. Good deal. Now you see how we used blend ranges instead of trying to mask, instead of making life difficult, and instead of using blend modes. Now I can always come through and I can apply the blend modes if I want to. Might add, add. That's kind of cool, actually. All right. I'm relatively happy with that. But you see the only thing that it's bringing into the blend are those things that I've told it are within the range. So blend modes are a powerful tool in Affinity Photo. I use them a lot when I have large areas of black that I can then remove. And then you make some subtle adjustments. It's never a one and done. You're going to have to have multiple tools in order to get a really good professional result. All right. This one's gone on a little long. All of these are in your downloads if you wanted to follow along. Let's go ahead and get into the next lesson.